Coming up on Sporting Dog Adventures, I leave my dogs at home for the opportunity to travel to the great state of Nevada. We head to the Sierra Nevada mountains with Derek Cole of Webley and Scott Gunmakers to hunt wild chuckers over German short hair pointers. Stay tuned for all of the high flying adventures. Sporting Dog Adventures, run boy run. Everything you need is here under the sun. Everything you need is here under the sun. Welcome to the Sporting Dog Adventures channel. Please like our video and subscribe so you catch our three new videos weekly. This week our hunt takes us to the high desert mountains outside of Reno, Nevada, where we hunt with Jay Kincaid and Derek Cole. During this hunt, we hunt over two phenomenal German short hair pointers named Porter and Cash in some of the most beautiful and rugged country that I have ever bird hunted in. Being from the flatlands of Wisconsin, I can honestly say it was beautiful where we hunted, along with being steep. So we're on a chucker hunt here, Jay. We got our pointers, they're running some big country. We got a lot of sagebrush. What is the, uh, tell me about chucker hunting in, in, in Nevada. Yeah, chucker hunting, you know, we have a lot of public land here and uh, a lot of people participate in chucker hunting. You know, ch chucker hunting in, in Nevada is like pheasant hunting of North Dakota. This is, this is what us Nevadans do. You know, you need, uh, you got to have dogs. We got a couple here today and hopefully we can get on some birds. Now, what kind of dogs do we have? Uh, two German short hair pointers. Porter, he's about eight years old and Cash here, he's about six. And they're seasoned veterans, so we're ready for the hunt and we're carrying our Webley and Scott shotguns. Derek, tell us about our guns. Well, today we've got a couple models here, uh, two model 920s, uh, all 20 gauges, and we've got a model 3000 as well. The uh, model 920 is our opening price point gun, has a retail, suggested about $1,200, significant value. Uh, five chokes, automatic ejectors, very well balanced gun, uh, all box lock designs. And then uh, the gun that Jerry is carrying today is a model 3000, and this is a side lock design, seven pin side lock and has a suggested retail about $6,500. And I'm not carrying that one because we know I'd probably wreck it. Right, we're letting the guy at the best speed pack that one around today. Well, the dogs look like they're ready to go. I know Cash just took off on us, so I guess we better put these guns to good use and get ready for the show. Let's yep. do it. All right. When I talked to Derek and Jay about this trip, they described the chucker hunt as being something where the birds were gonna be up high. They told me that if you didn't like the hike uphill, this probably wasn't sport for you. They were definitely right in their description. I'm here with Paul Cartez. Paul, you ran camera for me on this hunt. What do you think of the high desert mountains? Uh, they were kind of big. <laughs> uh, it was beautiful to look at. They were high, obviously, but it was definitely an experience I haven't had before. Now, I told you, I've done elk hunting and hunted in the mountains, and I told you that it was going to be quite the experience and that it was going to be hard to keep up. And I noticed a lot of times there were spots during the show that we put together where we look like ants on the side of the hill. Why is that? Oh, I needed to take a break or two. <laughs> uh, well, you needed to take a break, but you also wanted to look at all the scenery. It was absolutely gorgeous to be up there. We've got the dog on a GPS collar so we can find him. He's out there got to be at least a half mile which obviously you can see it's not like there's a lot of trees but with all the little dips and, and uh, draws and coolies they have here it's, it's it gives you the opportunity to look on your collar to see right where the dog's at and the GPS has a what is it range of five, mile, five miles on it? Uh, seven, miles, yeah. seven mile range on it so that'll uh, the dog can run really big for us and if it goes on point at seven miles away I'll, uh, I'll you guys can tell me how, how it was. Yeah we better get a helicopter. <laughs> It was a huge advantage to have Porter and Cash covering all the ground. We'd stay up on the high areas. We had a GPS, we could see them. When they went on point, we could head down, flush the birds, and let the Webley and Scots do the rest. Well, we just had a covey of birds break. And of course, they flew down about a good mile down the canyon where we're headed. So Derek, we're gonna get our chance. That was part of the deal. We gotta tire them out first, they fly slower. Oh, so we got a point up ahead. I got that one. Got one down, boys. Got it, boys. All right, let's go, Jay. 
My first wild chucker, gentlemen. How about that? There you go. Shot a lot of these pen birds, but this is cool. Thank you, man. Equipment on the hunt like this was everything. Good footwear, clothing, and a reliable gun were beyond necessary. The model 920 gauge I carried from Webley and Scott was reliable, and important for this hunt, it was light. I sure didn't need to carry an extra weight as we hiked up and down the hills. The morning moved on and the birds started to come down from the higher elevations and the hunt continued. Stay tuned for more high flying adventures from the high desert of Nevada. Welcome to this week's training tip. I'm Paul Cartes from Lakota Retrievers and this is Gage. He's a four month old golden retriever and this week we're going to talk about body language. We're talking about your body language, not so much the dog's body language. We forget that we're so much taller than the dogs, so we tend to ho hover over the dog, which intimidates the dogs. When I work with the dog, I'll always bend my knees and I'll get down to the dog's level, which will make me more inviting to the dog. He'll want to warm up to me and come right into me. What a good boy. What a good boy. What a... You want to reflect your voice for a positive outlook or a positive attitude towards the dog. The happier you are with the dog, the happier the dog will work for you and want to work for you. A lot of people get very monotone or very harsh with their voice. You want to be very happy and positive with your voice. Yeah, what you got? What a good boy. Here, here. When I do it in a stern voice, he, he comes to me, but he's not very excited about it. Versus if I have a happy voice or an up voice, here, 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 yay. He, he's going to want to come in a lot better. What a good boy. Remember, key to body language is voice inflection and a positive attitude. Now back to the hunt. This was a difficult hunt for me, but it was on the dogs as well. They covered 10 times the area I did. Jay did a great job taking care of the dogs and making sure that they were more than prepared for the hunt. It's hard on them. You know, I think when they do it all the time, they get used to how to run on, on the rocks and, and they get a little easier on their feet. But there's no doubt it's, it's hard on them. It's, they're not running out in the flat grasslands, that's for sure. You know, you'll get, You'll get hot spots on their feet. You can run them two, three, four days before they'll blow out their feet. Um, and you know, I always carry boots with me in my pack. You gotta take care of your dog's feet, that's for sure. Uh, we're out here, got beautiful backdrop and everything. Beautiful guns. Tell me about your company. Wobbly Scott is a company that's been around for a long time. Uh, can date our history back to the year 1790. Started as a bullet mold manufacturer in Birmingham, England, and uh, manufactured uh, shotguns. Started manufacturing shotguns not too long thereafter, early 1800s. Um, so the history with the double gun business dates back over 220 years. And you've got shotguns, and you've also got air rifles. <coughs> shotguns, and we have a line of, of air rifles as well. We've been manufacturing air rifles and pistols uh, for over 100 years, and. Uh, a lot of folks probably remember the Webley Tempest pistol from when they were kids, mm -hmm. and we still manufacture and support that today. I know we got to put some chuckers on the ground with them, and I can't wait to shoot it. Looking forward to it. It's we better be a head up day. the hill. I think we lost Jay. <laughs> <laughs> we're dealing with some some birds today that have obviously seen some pressure, and they're wild, don't want to hold. But I think if we just keep on them and maybe break a covey up. We're going to get them eventually. Having an experienced hunting guide or partner was essential during this hunt. Jay would have the spots where he would tell us, hey, there's a covey over there. It hangs out there, they feed there, and then they work their way down the hill to water. We would systematically go from spot to spot where he would normally flush coveys, and then we finally got into a really good group of birds. I got two, boys. Nice work, fellas. Webley, 20 gauge, kicking butt. You're done. That was awesome. Yeah, you are done. That's my first double chucker. That was good stuff. Yep. Nice work. Nice oh work, Cash. See this looking little bird. Gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah. The red I mean, bills. And then you get into the, under, the underbelly of them. Fantastic. Wild Nevada chucker. One good covey, some great dog work, 
and four birds on the ground. The high flying adventures were on. Stay tuned for more of the hunt after this. On this week's Kids Corner, I take my two sons out and I film them during a youth turkey hunt in the state of Wisconsin. Getting our kids out and teaching them hunting on something other than a video game is important to our sport and its future. I truly hope that you guys enjoy these wonderful hunts that I got to be a part of. Safety's on. Safety's on. Safety on? Yeah. Um, the hunt went good. Uh, Clayton backed me up because I missed the first bird. And. Uh, Why'd you miss? I missed because I got too excited. <laughs> and then me, as a good brother, I, I like <laughs> helped it out. <laughs> um, well, the bird came in and we watched him as he destroyed the Jake and then, and then he went after the striding Tom and then. Cole decided to shoot him, and when Cole missed, I lined up on him in that, and then I shot him. Hey Cole, you got your turkey. One of the biggest threats to our hunting heritage is that we're losing new hunters. Get your kids out, teach them the love of the outdoors, whether it's hunting, fishing, hiking, just get them outside. We had some great shooting on a couple of cubbies, and Jay made the call that it was time to head to a new area. It's a really pretty country. A lot of sagebrush, grass, and hopefully a bunch of birds. Hunting in elevation was a little bit deceptive when you talk about a high desert. We would start out the day, it was about eight degrees in the morning. By the time we got done with our hunt in the afternoon, it was pushing 60 degrees. Definitely a huge variance in temperature. Oh, we got a point up here, guys. That's cool. I think you'd be able to see the bird when they're like this. It's got to be right in that sage there, hey? Oh, we got him. Got him, boy. That was cool. Day bird, come on. You know, you get into retrievers now. The difference between that, Jay, that bird would have been, a uh, retriever would have been right after it, and I couldn't have shot as low as it was going. Right. But uh, with the pointers, were they held like that for you? That's phenomenal. I mean, they, they locked solid, they stayed there, gave us a shot, got us the retrieve, and we're chucker hunting. I can appreciate good dog work. Jay's dogs held solid. A couple of times they held for 20 minutes until we could get down to where the birds were. Even when the birds would flush, they stood there like statues. It was fantastic. Stay tuned for more high flying adventures after this. Well, Derek, we're on a break. Had a little lunch. Tell me about the gun. Well, this is the model 920. This is a 20 gauge, 28 inch barrels. Uh, CNC machined receiver, ejector, grade two walnut, five chokes. Suggested retail, $1,200. Now, the chokes, you've got a really cool wrench that comes with this. I know I, I got it out and I was like, wow, that is really slick. What chokes does it all come with? Uh, it comes with a full, uh, improved, improved, modified, modified, 
and a uh, skeet to it. You're also your three inch chamber, correct? That's correct. Yeah, these are chambered for three inch, steel proofed. So you can shoot a uh, you know, steel shot through them if you like, no problem. So we got lead steel, environmentally friendly stuff. We've got the high end uh, style look to it with the wood and uh, knocks birds down too. Yeah, it's pretty effective. It uh, really shoulders nice. It's very comfortable. It just feels natural every time you pull it up. I love how it tracks. I love how when you pull it up, it sits just perfect for me. I mean, I pulled mine up today. Had never shot it before. Had it, but didn't shoot it before. My kids had. And uh, what, I think the first three birds I shot it, I put down. Yeah, you were, you were shooting it very, very well. Um, you know, and that's a very common uh, comment that I get from people that put this gun to their shoulder for the first time is how natural it feels and how easy it is to shoot. It just feels like an extension of your arm. Yeah. Well, if you guys are looking for a great gun for a great value that performs in the field, check out the Webley and Scott Model 900. This is the 20 gauge. It also comes in a 12 gauge. It comes in a 12 gauge as well. That's correct. In 28 and 30 inch barrels in the, in the 12 gauge and 26 and 28 inch barrels in the 20 gauge. And it's got a 3 inch chamber. I use mine for waterfall and upland. Absolutely. Webleyandscott.com. After a short break and lunch, we headed back down the hill looking for more birds. What a nice point. Wow, we got a nice solid point there. Dog back and looks great. Porter looks awesome. I put Jay and Derek on the spot on this next part. They made two great shots and they did not let the dogs down. I'll be the last line of defense over here. Derek, it's all on you, man. Like it'd be like Howard Cosell. And they're ready. They got the bird. Oh, there it goes. Second one. Nice shot. See? You guys didn't need me. Probably a three go up, and that last one didn't go very far. It just kind of pitched over the hill and stopped here. And uh, dogs are just locked. So now all we got to do is not let the dogs down. Two. feathers. Look at that. Come. It's still raining. Nice shot. On, that boy. was cool. Thanks, man. Come. Jay and Derek, we're at the end of a great day. Thanks for taking us out, man. Your dogs did phenomenal. Oh, thanks. Uh, that was a great time. We got a lot of birds on the ground. Did some good shooting. Yep. Webleys did their job. Webleys did their job. And beautiful, beautiful scenery. Man, this is the office that you want to have when you're out to work, right? Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. If you're looking for a hunt that's outside the norm, there is a ton of public ground in Nevada. All you need is some good dogs, some friends, especially ones that are in shape, and you can enjoy yourself out there on some high flying adventures. Stay tuned for an episode later this season where we go back out hunting with Jay, Derek, Porter, and Cash on a valley quail hunt on the Nevada-California border. Next week on Sporting Dog Adventures, we head to South Dakota to hunt with a great organization that supports some true American heroes. The Wounded Warriors in Action Group uses the outdoors to help soldiers when dealing with injuries they suffered while defending our country around the world. They dropped some mortars, uh, one hit close to where I was at and it threw me into a truck. Several hours later, they backed me out and uh, spent two years in the hospital. You'll get to hear their stories firsthand and the sacrifices they have made for all of us on next week's show. Close captioning is brought to you by Hadel's Game Calls. It's in Northwest uh, County. Stop, Clayton, can you not yawn, please? We're gonna do a show called Sporting Chucker Adventures, and all of this is gonna be is chucker hunting. Are you with me on this show? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Paul Cartes tip of wild chucker hunting in Nevada would be? Go to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you need is here under the sun. 
hope you guys enjoy this. Did you speak to?